astrological institutions, being a perfect isagogy to the whole astral science, or judgment of the nature, virtue, and influence of the celestial bodies upon the terrestrial, by which active, not compulsive, virtue, all manner of questions incident to sublunary actions, affairs, and conditions are resolved according to the position of the heavens. By a student in physic and astrology. Robert Turner Astrological Institutions Of the division of the celestial globe, how the signs thereof are ordained and disposed, why they are only twelve, and not more nor less, and of the nature, names, and qualities of the signs. They who desire to attain to the perfection of this celestial study ought first to initiate themselves well and perfectly in the grounds and rudiments thereof. To which end it is first to be understood that the circle of the zodiac is divided into twelve equal parts, called signs, which are thus named and charactered as follow. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittary, Capricorn, Aquary, and Pisces. As thus you see them stand placed, so they are opposite one to another in the zodiac. As Aries is opposite to Libra, Virgo to Pisces, and so of the rest. Now, if a question should be asked, why or what is the reason there are twelve signs, and no more nor less? One reason may be given, that twelve is a more efficacious number than any other, but that not being much efficacious, another reason is because that all elementary bodies are composed of four elements, to wit, fire, air, water, and earth. And these elementative individuals, and all the parts of the individuals, do consist of these four elements. And to every individual, there are incident three things, to wit, beginning, medium, and end, which being multiplied by four, make twelve. From hence it comes to pass, that three of these signs are fiery, three airy, three earthy, three watery, which are called triplicities. As Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius are fiery signs, therefore these three make the fiery triplicity. Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, earthy, and make the earthy triplicity. Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, airy, and make the airy triplicity. Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, watery, and make the watery triplicity. And thus it is found out that there are only twelve signs, no more, nor less. More there could not be, because every one acteth universally upon the four elements, and every one of them operateth upon the element assigned and deputed to him, according to the threefold ends, namely principium, beginning, medium, middle, et finis, and end. Wherefore, because the signs act according to their triplicity upon every element, and the elements are four only, it is necessary that there should be only twelve signs, neither more nor less, because Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius are fiery, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn earthy, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius airy, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces watery. 
after what manner and what operations the signs have upon the elements. Having now declared that the signs do act and operate upon the elements, we shall now set forth upon what element every sign acts, and after what manner. For Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, because they are fiery, operate upon the fiery element, but after a diverse manner. Of Aries Aries operateth upon the fiery element, impressing thereinto temperate heat and dryness, thereby quickening and preserving life. And it is the nourisher and beginner of the natural motion of all things, animal and vegetable. By his heat and quickening dryness, causeth generation of animals, and all vegetables to germinate and shoot forth their branches, leaves, and flowers. Of Leo The operation of Leo upon the fiery element is hot and dry, remote from temperature, so that with it nature beginneth to move to the diminution and abatement of the leaves of trees and fruits, and to decline them to destruction. Of Sagittary Sagittary impresseth into the fiery element heat and dryness, void of all temperature, thereby causing the destruction of seeds and herbs, the leaves of trees, and hurt to many living creatures. And this is the natural operation of these three fiery signs upon the element of fire, their triplicity. Of the earthy triplicity, and first, of Taurus. Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, which are earthy signs, do operate upon the element of earth, but also diversely, as Taurus operates upon the earth, impressing thereinto temperate cold and dryness profitable to the earth, causing by this temperament springing of buds and flowers, the generation of many sensible species, and an augmentation of vegetables. Of Virgo The influence of this sign worketh upon the earth cold and dryness, hardly temperate, but tending rather to destruction, through the which, although vegetable things receive some detriment and diminution, herbs wither, and the leaves of trees fall. Yet is the coldness thereof not altogether exempt from temperature, for although some things perish, yet others are engendered. Some herbs begin to bud and spring again. Of Capricorn Capricorn impresseth upon the earth cold and dryness, void of temperature, destroying seed, herb, and tree, so that nature is not moved, nor few animals generated, and those only domestics. Neither do seeds or trees bud or grow, unless casually. Of the signs of the airy triplicity, and first of Gemini. Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius do also operate upon the airy element, according to their diverse natures, for Gemini affecteth with a temperate disposure of heat and moisture, comforting nature and natural heat, bringing odiferous smells and a pleasant temperature of air, producing seeds to fruits. Of Libra Libra impresseth into the air heat and moisture, but somewhat declining it from temperature causing it to be thick, gross, and mixed, and vertible to the individual species of nature, as seeds, herbs, and boughs of trees. Of Aquary Aquary operateth upon the airy element, heat and moisture, but untemperate, noisome, 
and hurtful to all seeds and things vegetable, bringing hurt and destruction thereunto. Of the watery signs, and first of cancer. Cancer impresseth upon the watery element, coldness and moisture, temperate, and apt for the nutrition of nature, having a comfortable and temperate humidity, whereby all things, both animal and vegetable, do live and are maintained. Of Scorpio Scorpio operates upon the watery element, imparting thereunto coldness and moisture exempt from all temperature, bringing rather corruption than generation, nutriment or preservation. Of Pisces Pisces operates upon the watery element by an influence of coldness and moisture, exempt from temperature, inclining to the destruction of animals, seeds, and vegetables, by reason of the corruption which Pisces impresseth upon the water. Thus you see the several influences of the signs upon the four elements according to their triplicity. Now we come to their several successive description and signification as they follow one another in order in the zodiac. The Particular Significations of the Twelve Signs Of Aries Aries is a sign of the fiery triplicity, by nature hot and dry, oriental, masculine, diurnal, movable, cardinal, bestial, luxurious, intemperate, and violent. The Day House of Mars Of Places This sign signifies hilly and sandy grounds, unfrequented places where thieves seek refuge in houses, places where sheep and small cattle do feed or used to be. The covering, feeling, or plistering in houses, stables of small beasts, brick, or lime kills. The person described by this sign is a dry body not very tall, lean, strong, well-set limbs, and lusty bones, long visage, black-eyed brows, a long neck, thick shoulders, a brown or swarthy complexion. Diseases which this sign affects our bodies with are pushes, wheels and pimples to the face, smallpox, hair lips, Noli me tangere, polyps, headaches, baldness, toothache, ringworms, apoplexies, magrims, and falling sickness. Of Taurus The second sign successively in the zodiac is Taurus, which is a sign, as before said, of the earthy triplicity the night house of Venus, meridional, cold and dry, melancholy, fixed and nocturnal, domestical and bestial. It signifies cellars and low rooms and houses, low houses and places where harness and instruments of cattle are laid up, stables of horses, pastures where no houses are near, Plain grounds or places newly grubbed, wherein some corn is sowed, near trees or hedgerows. It describes a short but well-set, strong, composed stature, broad forehead, great eyes and face, great mouth and thick lips, gross hands and black rugged hair. Diseases its influence causeth are king's evil, wens, sore throats, quinzies, ulcers, and impostumes in the throat, and deflections of rheum falling into the throat. Of Gemini 
Gemini, the third sign, is of the airy triplicity, the day house of Mercury, is by nature hot and moist, sanguine, diurnal, common, a double bodied human sign, occidental, masculine. The places by this sign signified are wainscot rooms, plastering and walls of houses, halls, playing places, mountains and hilly places, barns, storehouses for corn, coffers, chests, high places. The person by him described is a straight, tall body of a sanguine complexion, but dark and obscure, long arms and the hands and feet oftentimes short and fleshy, the dark hair inclining to black, a strong, active body, a piercing, wanton, hazel eye, a good sight, and a perfect, judicious understanding. Diseases this sign signifies are distempers in the fancy and brain, windiness in the reins, infirmities in the arms, shoulders and hands, corrupted blood. Of Cancer This is the fourth sign of the zodiac, and of the watery triplicity, the house of the moon, septentrional, cold and moist, phlegmatic, fruitful, feminine, nocturnal, movable, solstitial, mute and slow of voice. The places it delights in are the sea, great rivers and navigable waters. Places near rivers, brooks, springs, wells, cellars, wash houses, marsh grounds, ditches, where rushes grow, sedges, sea banks, trenches, and cisterns. The person by this sign described are commonly of a short, low stature, something broad towards the shoulders or upper parts, the visage round, a pale, sickly complexion, the hair, a sad brown, little eyes, if a woman apt to have many children. Diseases it signifies are all imperfections in the breast, stomach, and paps. Cancers in the breast, weak digestion, a cold stomach, tissic, salt phlegm and rotten coughs, hydropical humors, and imposthumes in the stomach. Of Leo Leo is the fifth sign successively in the zodiac, and the second of the fiery triplicity. It is by nature hot and dry, masculine, choleric, diurnal, commanding, bestial, barren, the house of the sun. It signifies places where wild beasts frequent, as woods, forests, deserts, steep, cragged rocks, and inaccessible places, kings' palaces, castles, forts, parks. In houses, he signifies places where fire is kept, or near a chimney. It represents a full, large body, something exceeding a middle stature, a great head, large, staring, or goggle eyes. A quick sight, narrow sides, broad shoulders, a dark flaxen or yellow curling hair, a ruddy fierce countenance, a high sanguine complexion, a strong, valiant, and active body. Diseases signified by this sign are sickness and pains in the ribs, sides, and back, pleurisies, convulsions, trembling or passion of the heart, 
burning fevers, sore eyes, plague, pestilence, and yellow jaundice. A Virgo The sixth sign is Virgo, of the earthly triplicity. It is an earthly, cold, barren, melancholy, feminine, nocturnal, southern sign, the house and exaltation of Mercury. The places by this sign signified are studies where books are, closets, dairy houses, or places where butter and cheese is kept, cornfields, granaries, malt houses, ricks of hay, barley, wheat, or peace. It describes a decent, well-composed body, a mean stature, a well-favored, ruddy brown complexion, black hair not very beautiful, the voice shrill, the members all inclining to brevity, a discreet, judicious, well-spoken person, studious and addicted to history. The diseases he excites in the body are all diseases of the belly, worms, wind colic, obstructions in the bowels, and mesorrhakes, crooking in the guts, infirmities in the stones. Of Libra The places it represents are upper rooms in houses, chambers, garrets, one chamber with another. In the fields, it signifies ground near windmills, barns, or straggling outhouses, saw pits or places where wood is cut, sides of hills and tops of mountains, grounds where hawking and hunting is used, sandy or gravelly fields, a pure, serene, and sharp air. The shape of the body represented by this sign is tall, straight, and slender, a sanguine complexion, and a round, beautiful visage, usually in age, a high color, the hair smooth, long, and yellowish. Diseases it inflicts are all infirmities in the reins of the back, kidneys, bladder, loins, or haunches, as stone or gravel, heats, ulcers, inflammations, or weakness in the reins, kidneys, loins, bladder and back, and corruption of blood. Libra, or the balance, is the day house of Venus, a sign of the airy triplicity, hot and moist, occidental, sanguine, masculine, movable, cardinal, humane, equinoctial. Of Scorpio Scorpio is a sign of the watery triplicity, the house of joy of Mars. It is cold, watery, nocturnal, phlegmatic, feminine, fixed, and northern. The places it signifies are such as creeping venomous beasts use, sinks, stinking lakes, muddy marsh grounds, kitchens, larders, wash houses, gardens, orchards, vineyards, ruinous houses near water. He personates a strong, able body, corpulent, a broad face, a muddy, duskish complexion, the hair dark, thick, and curly, a short neck, the body hairy, subtle, and deceitful persons. Diseases ruled by this sign are gravel and stone in the bladder, ruptures, fistulas, gonorrheas, piles, ulcers in the matrix, all infirmities in the privy parts. 
of Sagittary. This is a sign of the fiery triplicity, the house of joy of Jupiter. It is by nature hot and dry, fiery, masculine, choleric, diurnal, common, bicorporal, and double-bodied. The places it signifies are stables or places where horses and great cattle are kept. It signifies hills, the highest places of lands and grounds, upper rooms and houses, and places near the fire. The personage and shape of body hereby signified is well favored, a long visage, the complexion ruddy like sunburnt, chestnut colored hair a middle stature, and strong body. It signifies all diseases, fistulas, and hurts in the thighs and buttocks, denotes fevers and blood overheated, hurts by falls from horses or four-footed beasts, by fire, heat, and intemperance. Of Capricorn This sign is of the earthy triplicity, the house of Saturn, an exaltation of Mars, and by nature cold and dry, nocturnal, melancholic, earthly, feminine, solstitial, meridional, movable, domestic, four-footed, and cardinal. The places it signifies are ox or cow stalls, calves or sheep's pens, and the places where sheep feed, where old wood is laid up, tools for husbandry, and sails for ships, or such like material are kept. Barren, bushy, thorny, or fallow fields, dunghills, or lay stalls, dark, low places in houses near the ground or threshold. The persons signified by this sign are usually of a low corporature, dry bodies, slender, lean, long visage, little beard, black hair, narrow chin, little neck, and narrow breast. Diseases, it signifies, are leprosy, itch, scab, and all diseases incident to the knees, at strains, fractures, dislocations, and the like. Of Aquary Aquary is a sign of the airy triplicity, by nature hot and moist, masculine, western, sanguine, diurnal, humane, rational, and fixed, the day-house and joy of Saturn. It signifies minerals, new digged quarries of stones, hilly and uneven places, springs or conduit heads, vineyards, roofs, eaves, or the upper parts of houses. It denotes a thick, strong, and well-composed corporature, not tall, sanguine, fair complexion. The part of the body it rules is the legs, from the knees to the ankles, and all diseases incident to those parts. Cramps, wind by melancholy coagulated in the veins, or blood. Of Pisces. Pisces, the twelfth and last sign in the zodiac, is a sign cold and moist by nature, of the watery triplicity, boreal, feminine, nocturnal, bicorporal, or double bodied, phlegmatic, common, an effeminate, idle, sickly sign, the house of Jupiter and exaltation of Venus.
The places signified by this sign are watery grounds and springs frequented with fowls, fish ponds and rivers full of fish, places where hermitages have been, moats, water mills. In houses, it signifies places near the water, some well or pump, or places where water stands. The corporature of body this sign personates is short and not very handsome. The face large, complexion pale, body fleshy and somewhat inclining to crookedness. The diseases it governs are all infirmities incident to the feet, as lameness, aches, gout, chillblains, cold and moist diseases, and likewise salt phlegms, scabs, itch, botches, boils, and ulcers proceeding from putrefaction of the blood. You must understand that the twelve signs are divided into parts. Every sign hath his opposite, and Alcabitius calls six of them septentrional, that is, from the beginning of the sign of Aries to the end of Virgo, and six meridional, that is, from the beginning of Libra to the end of Pisces. Thus you may see them here ranked in opposition, and place one against another with their Latin and Greek appellations and several characters. The septentrional are Aries, Krios, Taurus, Tauros, Gemini, Didymos, Cancer, Carcinos, Leo, Leon, Virgo, Parthenos. The meridional are Libra, Zygos, Scorpio, Scorpios, Sagittarius, Toxotes, Capricorn, Igokeros, Aquarius, Hydrokoos, Pisces, Ichthyes. Six of these signs are said to be of right, direct, or long ascension, that is, from the beginning of Cancer to the end of Sagittary, and six of short or oblique ascension, that is, from the beginning of Capricorn to the end of Gemini, so that signs of right or long ascension are Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius. Signs of oblique or short ascension are Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini. Signs commanding are Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. Signs obeying are Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. Signs of long ascension continue two hours or more in the ascendant, and signs of short ascension do arise some in less than an hour, some more, which you may see in the table of houses. The whole zodiac consisteth of 360 degrees, and every one of these signs 30 degrees, and every degree 60 minutes, and every minute 60 seconds. The signs are also divided into four parts, answerable to the four quarters of the year, as Aries, Taurus, Gemini to the vernal or spring quarter, which is sanguine, hot, and moist, Cancer, Leo, and Virgo to the Istival or summer quarter, which is hot, dry, and choleric, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius, to the autumnal or harvest quarter, which is cold and dry, resembling the melancholic complexion, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces are attributed to the winter quarter, during which time the sun passeth through these three signs, and is cold and moist of the phlegmatic complexion. 
We have told you at large the operations of these signs in their triplicity, that is, thus distinguished. Every three signs, which are concordant in nature, do make a triplicity. Briefly, thus, the fiery triplicity, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, hot and dry, the earthly triplicity, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, cold and dry, the airy triplicity, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, cold and moist, the watery triplicity, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, cold and moist. Signs movable are Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. Signs fixed are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. Signs common are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces. These last four are called common because they partake in property and nature, both with the movable and fixed sign, that is, with the preceding and consequent sign. The signs equinoctial are Aries and Libra, so called because the sun's entrance into these signs makes the spring and autumn and equalizeth day and night throughout the world. Further, the signs are divided into these several distinctions, namely bestial or quadrupedian, four-footed, fruitful or prolifical, barren, manly, humane and courteous, feral, mute, or slow of voice. Bestial signs are Aries, Taurus, Leo, Sagittarius, and Capricorn. Fruitful are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Barren are Gemini, Leo, and Virgo. Manly, humane, or courteous are Gemini, Virgo, Libra, and Aquarius. Feral, Leo, and the last part of Sagittarius. Mute signs, or slow of voice, are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. There is also in every sign degrees of several natures, as degrees masculine and feminine, light, dark, smoky, void, deep or pitted, lame or deficient, and degrees increasing fortune, which are all briefly comprehended in an ensuing table. The first column whereof shows the degrees masculine and feminine of every sign. The second, the degrees light, dark, smoky, and void. The third column, the degrees deep or pitted. The fourth, the degrees lame or deficient. The fifth and last column, the degrees increasing fortune. So that if a question be proposed of a woman with child, whether it be male or female, or in a question of thievery, whether it be man or woman that is the thief, if it so happen that the testimonies are equal of both sexes, so that neither angle, planet, nor sign discover it, then have respect to the degrees of the sign the moon is in, and of the sign wherein the planet that is significator of the party or thing quested after is. And consider the degree of the cusp of the house which signifies the thing quested after, and judge thereby, concluding by masculine degrees a male, and by feminine degrees a female party. The degrees light, dark, smoky, void, discover the beauty, fairness, or deformity of the querent. The degrees void argue a dull, and weak understanding. Smoky degrees signify neither fair nor foul, but a mixed complexion, middle stature. Degrees deep or pitted denote a person not able to shift for himself, 
not knowing how to help himself without assistance. Azimene, or lame degrees, discover some lameness or hurt in some of the members, blindness, deafness, or some crooked deformity. Degrees increasing fortune show that if the cusp of the second house, lord of the second, Jupiter or the sun be in any of those degrees, it signifies wealth or increase of riches to the native or querent. See the following tables. A table showing what member of the body every planet signifies in every sign. By this foregoing table, if you desire to know in what part of the body a disease is, look what member of the body the significator of the sick party signifies in the sign you find him posited in, and in that part conclude the disease to be. A Table of the Aspects of the Planets Note that the dexter, that is, right aspects, are more efficacious and powerful in virtue than the sinister, the left, and that the dexter aspects are contrary to the succession of the signs and the sinister aspects in order according to their succession. The Colors of the Signs Aries giveth white mixed with red. Taurus, white, mixed with citrine. Gemini, white and red. Cancer, green and russet. Leo, red or green. Virgo, black speckled with blue. Libra, a dark crimson or tawny. Scorpio, brown. Sagittarius, yellow or a green sanguine. Capricorn, black or russet or a swarthy brown. Aquarius, a sky color mixed with blue. Pisces, white glistening color. The Colors of the Planets Saturn Black. Jupiter. Red mixed with green. Mars. Red or iron color. Sun. Purple. Yellow. Venus. White or purple. Mercury. Sky color or blue. Moon. Spotted with white and other mixed colors. The Description, Names, Nature, and Qualities of the Planets The planets, or stellae erraticae, are in number seven, which are called, and for brevity's sake, charactered as follows. Saturn, called also Kronos, Phoenon, Falcifer, Jupiter, Zeus, Phaeton, Mars, Mawors, Aris, Pirois, Gradibus. The Sun, Sol, Titan, Ilios, Phoebus, Apollo, Paian, Osiris, Diespiter. Venus, Kitherea, Aphrodite, Phosphorus, Desperigo, Erechina, Mercury, Mercurius, Hermes, Stillborn, Kilenius, Arcas, Luna, the Moon, called also Lucina, Cynthia, Diana, Phoebe, Latona, Noctiluca, 
Proserpina. The two nodes of the moon, called the head and tail of the dragon, are thus charactered. The dragon's head, an upward loop. The dragon's tail, a downward loop. The head is masculine, of the nature of Jupiter and Venus, a fortune. The tail, contrary to the head, feminine and unfortunate. Of Saturn Before we can attain to the perfection of this art, we must perfectly know the significations and natures of the seven planets and what impressions and operations they have upon our inferior bodies. The first whereof is Saturn, which, as Alcabitius saith, is a planet by nature cold and dry, intemperate, diurnal, masculine, and operateth upon coldness and dryness, the greater in fortune, a stirrer up of melancholy. He is of a color pale or wan, like lead or sky color. The first and highest of the planets, and all the others follow him in order, and therefore is the first that exercises his operation in conception, immediately after the injection of the seed into the womb by constringing and coagulating the matter of which the conception is formed. For the operation of the fixed stars, which are the principal agents, we are not manifestly sensible of, but of the planets only, which are the secondary agents. He is thirty years, wanting but a few days, passing through the twelve signs, his middle motion being two minutes and a half, his diurnal motion seldom exceeding six minutes, usually three four, or five. His greatest latitude septentrional is two degrees and forty-eight minutes. His southern latitude, two degrees and forty-nine minutes. His houses are Capricorn by night and Aquarius by day, wherein he rejoiceth. In Libra he is, and now shortly will be, exalted, and hath his fall in the opposite sign, Aries. He ruleth the airy triplicity by day. What other dignities he hath, you shall see in the table of essential dignities. He continues retrograde a hundred and forty days, and is five days stationary before and after retrogradation. His greatest years are 465. His greater, 47. His mean years, 45 and a half. His least, 30. He ruleth the first and eight hours of Saturday. His angel is Castiel. His friends are the Sun, Jupiter, and Mercury. Mars and Venus are his enemies. The persons signified by him are when he is well dignified, men of grave, sober, and profound judgment, careful in gathering and heaping together the goods of this life. In disputing, serious, and where a Saturnine person takes affection to anyone, which is very rare, he loves them with a perfect and preserving love and where he conceives hatred against any one, which oftentimes happens, he hates them with an ultimate hatred, and seldom or never desists from his hatred. But when he is ill-placed, he signifies a person of an envious, covetous, jealous, cowardly spirit, a lying, dissembling fellow, malicious, always murmuring and grudging at others, and repining at his own condition, full of evil cogitations. The corporature of body by this planet signified is of complexion naturally cold and dry, pale, of a middle stature, 
muddy complexion, little black eyes looking downward, a broad forehead, black or sad-colored hair, great ears, lowering eyebrows, thick lips and nose, a thin beard, broad shoulders, ill-favored knees and feet, going often, hitting one against another. If he be oriental, the stature is more short and decent. If occidental, more black and lean, and fewer hairs. If he want latitude, it shows the body is more lean. If he have great latitude, more fat and fleshy. And if the latitude be southern, more fleshy. If northern, hairy and much fleshy. In his first station, a little fat. In his second station, fat, ill-favored, and weak. By this rule, judge in all the other planets. The magistery he signifies, commonly couriers or dressers of leather, diggers of earth or coal mines or lead, plumbers, scavengers, bricklayers and brickmakers, and laborers of such as carry mortar to bricklayers, dyers, carters, hostlers, and such clownish professions. He generally signifies clowns, old men, beggars, husbandmen, laborers, monks, sectorists, sextons of churches, and the like. Of the complexion of Saturn with Jupiter and the other planets. If Jupiter be joined to Saturn, he signifies books and records of ecclesiastical matters, books treating of divinity, and wherein are written superior and celestial matters, as judgment of the stars, as well theoretical as practical laws, and all subtle arts and the like. If Mars be joined to Saturn, he signifies workers in hides of leather, whereof shoe soles are made. If soul be joined to him, it signifies dressers of hides. If Venus, he signifies an operation of leather to make drumheads, cymbals, and all sounding instruments for play and delight. Mercury joined to him signifies parchment makers, dressing of skins wherein writings are made for perpetual memory, as testaments instruments of buying and selling and the like, and parchments wherein are written accounts of expenses in the houses of noblemen, courts of princes, and others who will have remembrance kept of their expenses, merchants' accounts and the like. Of Jupiter Alcabitius saith that Jupiter is a fortune, masculine, diurnal, and naturally is a significator of substance, when the substance is by accident, which happeneth to the native after his birth, and that which first necessarily falleth to him. So is Jupiter also the second planet in order of the planets, and the second which exerciseth his operation in conception in giving thereunto life and spirit. He is by nature hot and moist, temperate, airy, and sanguine. He is of color bright or azure. His middle motion is four minutes and fifty-nine seconds. His diurnal motion, eight, ten, twelve, or fourteen minutes, so that he completeth his course through the zodiac in twelve years. His greatest north latitude is one and thirty-eight, his south latitude, one and forty. His day house is Sagittary, his night house, Pisces. He hath his detriment in Gemini and Virgo, is exalted in Cancer, and falls in Capricorn. He is retrograde a hundred and twenty days, and five days stationary before, 
and four after retrogradation. The beams of his orb are nine degrees before and after any aspect. He governeth the northeast wind, ruleth the air, the second and tenth month in conception, and in man the liver. His greatest years are four hundred and twenty-eight, his greater seventy-nine, his mean forty-five, his least years twelve. He ruleth the first and eighth hours of Thursday, his angel is Zadkiel, his friends all the planets except Mars, who is his enemy. When Jupiter is well disposed, he signifies such magisteries and professions of men as belong to law and justice, to judge justly and honestly. I doubt he is seldom such a significator or so dignified nowadays. Senators, counselors, ecclesiastical persons, students such as delight to do judgment and justice, and when they see any a strife or controversy, to be a means to compose it and make peace between them. Always studious of good things, benign, just, honorable, a helper of the needy, a lover of his friends, always desirous to do good. But if Jupiter be infortunate, saith Ptolemy, the native will be sluggish and backward to do good, practicing diabolical operations, practicing and studying hypocrisy, loving to live solitarily and predict things to come, addicted to schism, careless, no lover of his friends nor children, refusing conversation with men, abasing himself to everyone, unfaithful so that none can trust him, wicked, weak, and foolish in his judgment, laborious, a waster of his estate. He commonly signifies a tall stature and brown complexion. He signifies all infirmities proceeding of superfluity of blood, as pleurisies and fevers, all imperfections in the liver and lungs, trembling of the heart, cramps, quincies, and windiness. Of the Signification of Jupiter with Saturn and the Other Planets If Saturn be joined to Jupiter, he signifies the native to study necromancie, magical sciences, enchantments, and exorcisms. If Mars be joined to him, he signifies a good physician and chirurgian. Sol joined to Jupiter signifies a good controversian, one prudent in contentions and disputes about matters of religion, one that well knows how to defend the true faith and oppose heretics against faith and arts, one that will not make a false conclusion, a good and orderly disputer in all things, not a babbler. When Venus is joined to Jupiter, it signifies a maker of instruments of music and one having great skill therein. If Mercury be joined to him, he signifies the science of arithmetic and all things belonging to numbers, the science of writing, therein excelling before others, the science of philosophy, astronomy, and all such arts. If Luna be joined to him, he signifies mariners, navigators, land measurers, geographers, inventors of waterworks, and the like. Of the planet Mars Next to Jupiter succeedeth Mars, the third planet, which is masculine, nocturnal, hot and dry, an infortune, fiery choleric, intemperate, of bitter taste, the natural significator of brethren and peregrinations, and hath the third operation ruling the third month in conception. 
He is of a shining, sparkling, fiery red color. His mean motion is 31 degrees, 27 minutes. His diurnal motion, from 32 to 44 in a day, seldom more. He passeth through the twelve signs in one year, 321 days or thereabout. His greatest north latitude is 4 degrees and 31 minutes. His south latitude is 6 degrees and 47 minutes. He ruleth the watery triplicity by day and night. His day house is Aries, his night house Scorpio. He is exalted in Capricorn and receives his fall in Cancer, and hath his detriment in Libra and Taurus. He is retrograde eighty days, stationary before retrogradation two or three days, before direction two days, and after one day. His orb is seven degrees before and after any aspect. He ruleth the western winds. His greatest years are 264, his greater 66, his mean 40, least 15. Samael is his angel, all the planets his enemies but Venus. He ruleth the first and eighth hours of Tuesday. Professions and qualities of men he usually signifies are all soldiers in general, captains and commanders of armies, smiths and workmen of iron, as gunners, sword and knife cutlers, armorers, physicians, apothecaries, chirurgians, alchemists, tailors, butchers, cooks, carpenters, watchmakers, barbers, dyers, pirates, catchpoles, bailiffs, sergeants, thieves, and hangmen. The corporature of middle stature, a strong body and large bones, but lean. A brown complexion, ruddy high color, red or sandy-colored hair, apt to curl. Sharp, hazel, piercing eyes. As Adila saith, Mars giveth to man a crooked, crass, or gross body, that he maketh a man a schismatic, that is, stirreth up and soweth seeds of discord among men. He saith the marital man hath the color of his face red, mixed with black, that is, a brown, sunburnt color, an ill-favored complexion, many times red spots or freckles in the face, a thin beard, and sometimes little or none, like a eunuch, or one that is gelded. As he is the lesser in fortune, and called by the poets the god of war, so is he the author of quarrels, strifes, and contentions, and when he is fortunate and well-dignified, signifies bold, confident, scornful persons, courageous, contentious, not containing themselves within the bounds of reason, valiant, imperious, great boasters of their own acts, not willing to obey anybody, but prudent in their own affairs. When Mars is ill-posited, he commonly signifies thieves, traitors, highwaymen, unconstant persons, inhumane, treacherous, cheaters, lovers of quarrels, frays and sedition, murderers, unthankful persons, oppressors, neither fearing God nor man, restless, unconstant, unquiet men, perjured persons. Of infirmities, he signifies burning fevers, proceeding of adult choler, frenzies, cankers, burnings with iron and fire, overflowing of the gall, yellow jaundice, madness, bloody flux, pustules, and breaking out in the skin, 
ringworms, blisters, plague and plague sores, scars, smallpox, wounds and diseases or ulcers in men's members of generation, stone in the reins or bladder. If Saturn be joined with Mars, he signifies the native will be very envious and rejoice at the mishap, tribulation, or hurt of another. A great sectary and lover of discord. If Jupiter be joined to him, he signifies a good oculist and searcher into the secrets of nature. If Venus, a good barber, a maker of ornaments for the hair and beard, a periwig maker. If Mercury, one expert in the opening of a vein and letting of blood. If the moon be joined with him, he signifies a skillful tooth drawer. Dorotheus saith that Mars signifies one of a piercing quick sight, proud, crafty, subtle in all his actions. Of Soul The sun is placed in the middle of the planets, and giveth heat to all things, and light to all the other planets. And as saith Alcabitius, he is a planet masculine, diurnal, and a fortune by aspect, but by a corporal conjunction, evil, by nature hot and dry. And the natural significator of fathers in a diurnal nativity he is the fourth planet, and his house is the fourth house, and hath the fourth operation in generation after conception, by infusing into the child natural heat and vital spirit, and forming the official members and parts of the face. He ruleth the yellow or color of gold, and delighteth in aromatic savors. His mean motion is fifty nine minutes and eight seconds. His diurnal motion, sometimes fifty-seven minutes and sixteen seconds, and sometimes more, but never above sixty-one minutes and six seconds, so that he passeth through all the twelve signs in a year, making day and night, summer and winter, seed time and harvest, so long as his motion continues, never to cease. He never hath latitude, but moves always in the ecliptic. Nor is he ever retrograde, but ever direct, unless it were in Hezekiah's time, but moveth sometime more slowly than at other times. Leo is his house both by day and night. He is exalted in Aries, hath his fall in Libra, in both which signs he makes the days and nights equal and hath his fall in Aquary. His orb is fifteen degrees before and after any aspect. He loves the eastern quarter and those winds. His greatest years are one thousand four hundred and sixty. His greater, two hundred and twenty. Mean, sixty-nine. Least, nineteen. The day of the week he ruleth is Sunday, the first and eighth hours thereof. His angel is Michael. His enemy only is old Saturn, all the other planets his friends. The qualities and possessions of men signified by the sun are emperors, kings, and princes, barons, magistrates, gentlemen, stewards and chief officers of all degrees, from the highest to the lowest, of any town, castle, or village, where there is no greater. Goldsmiths, coppersmiths, braziers, pewterers, and money coiners. Infirmities signified by the sun are trembling or palpitation of the heart, swoonings and diseases of the brain, cankers in the mouth, falling of watery rooms into the eyes, stinking breath, catarrhs, putrid fevers, 
His virtue and power chiefly ruleth in the head, brain, and heart. In man he governeth the right eye, and in woman the left eye. The solar man is commonly of a strong composure of body. A round face, the complexion yellow or saffron color. A large high forehead, a sharp sight, great goggle eyes, yellowish hair, a ruddy complexion, much hair on their beards and fleshy bodies. When the sun is significator and well-placed, he signifies high-spirited persons, but faithful and honest-minded, studious to get honors and wealth, but willingly parting from it again, prudent, trusty, humane, and affable. But when he is ill-dignified, he signifies proud, arrogant, disdainful men, a domineering spendthrift, dull in his judgment and purblind in his sight, foolish and unconstant in words and actions, a spender of his own estate, and a hanger upon other men, bragging of his gentility, having nothing else to crack on. The planet Venus, as Abu Mashar and Alcabitius say, is the lesser fortune, a planet by nature feminine, nocturnal, signifying wives and women, the natural significatrix of children, being lady of the fifth house, which is the house of children, and the fifth planet in order, wherefore she exerciseth her operation in the fifth month of conception, completing the sex of male and female, or what sex soever is conceived, perfecting the nose, eyelids, and the whole disposition of the face. A planet signifying mirth, joy, pleasure and delight, ruleth the spirit and seed of generation. She is of a color bright and shining, called Hesperus, or evening star, when she is occidental, that is, shines in the west after sunset, and Lucifer, or the bright morning star, when she is oriental, that is, shines long in the morning before day. Her mean motion is fifty-nine minutes and eight seconds. Her diurnal motion from sixty-two to seventy-six minutes a day, never exceeding eighty-two minutes. Her greatest latitude, north and south, is nine degrees and two minutes. Libra is her diurnal house, then Taurus her night house. She is exalted in Pisces, receives detriment in Aries and Scorpio, and hath her fall in Virgo. She governeth the earthly triplicity by day. She continues retrograde about twenty-four days, and is two days stationary before and after retrogradation. Her orb is seven degrees before and after any aspect. Her greatest years, 151. Her greater, 82. Her mean years. Her least, 8. She governeth the age of man from 14 to 28. Her angel, Anael. Her day, Friday of which she ruleth the first and eighth hours. Her friends are all the planets, except Saturn. The professions she signifies are generally all such as make or sell commodities for to adorn women, as glovers, perfumers, embroiderers, tailors, upholsters, linen drapers, mercers, silkmen, seamsters, musicians, players, choristers, wives, mothers, and maids. Of infirmities, she signifies such as are cold and moist, all diseases in or about the genital members, matrix and vulva, gonorrhea or French pox, burstness, all diseases proceeding from inordinate lust, 
She represents a comely person, not very tall, a lovely complexion, smooth brown hair, a round face, amorous wandering eyes inclining to black, neat, well-shapen body, delighting in cleanliness. The disposition of the mind she signifies, when well dignified, is quietness, love and friendship, one pleasant and merry, much addicted to merry company and recreations, covetous of eating, drinking, and coition, amorous and zealous in their affections, light of credit, virtuous, and not mistruthful, but often suspected and ill thought of by others without cause. If ill-placed, she signifies one given to drunkenness and gluttony, incest and adultery, one of no faith, repute, or credit, a loose liver, a sectary, idolater, or atheist. Of Mercury Mercury, as saith Alcabitius, is a planet of co-mixed nature, diurnal, inclining to alter his nature according to that planet he is joined to and the sign he is in. If he be joined to a good planet, that which he effecteth is good. If to an evil planet, he effecteth evil. If he be joined to a masculine planet, he is said to be masculine. If to a feminine planet, feminine. If to a nocturnal planet, nocturnal. And if he be joined to a diurnal planet, he is said to be diurnal. But by his own nature, he is said to be cold and dry, melancholy. Amongst the elements, he rules the water, of humors, the mixed. He rules the animal spirits, the sixth month in conception, author of craftiness, subtlety, and perjury. He is the least of all the planets, and by reason of his propinquity to the sun, is seldom seen, being ever distant from him above twenty-seven degrees. He is of a dark silver color. His mean motion is fifty-nine minutes and eight seconds. Sometimes he moveth one degree and forty minutes in a day, is twenty-four days retrograde and stationary the day before and after. His greatest south latitude is three degrees, thirty-five minutes. His greatest northern latitude is three degrees and thirty-three minutes. Gemini is his day house, and Virgo his night house. He is exalted in Virgo, receives detriment in Sagittary and Pisces, and his fall is in Pisces. He ruleth the airy triplicity by night. He stirreth up windy, boisterous weather. His orb is seven degrees before and after any aspect. His greatest years are four hundred and fifty, his greater seventy-six, his mean blank, his least twenty. His angel is Raphael, he ruleth Wednesday, the first and eighth hours thereof. His friends are Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. All the other planets are his enemies. Of professions, he signifies generally all learned men, mathematicians, astrologians, students in philosophy, merchants, secretaries, scribes, diviners, engravers, poets, attorneys, advocates, stationers, printers, solicitors, sometimes thieves and unlearned sectaries, grammarians, tailors, messengers, carriers, and footmen. He generally signifies all diseases and infirmities of the mind, magnanimity in little regarding or esteeming great things, and pusillanimity in magnifying little things of no value. Fearful imaginations, 
fantastical thoughts, unquietness of mind, madness, all diseases of the brain, stammering, imperfections of the tongue, lightness of the head, dumbness, vertigos, lethargy, and giddiness in the head, tisic, hoarseness, coughs, all defects in the memory and understanding. From the form or figures of men, as Masha'Allah says, Mercury signifies a man having color, neither very white nor very black, having a high forehead, long face, long nose, fair eyes, not quite black, thin beard, and that black, long fingers, the top of the head a brownish black, the body straight, spare, and tall. He partaketh of the influence of that planet which he is in aspect with. As if he be in aspect with Saturn, he is more heavy. If with Jupiter, more temperate. With Mars, more rash and hasty. Then he signifies the nature to have good skill in martial weapons. If he be in aspect with the sun, he is more genteel. With Venus, more jesting and with the moon, more swift. If Mercury be fortunate, his goodness and fortune will be according to the goodness and fortune of that planet which fortunates him, and according to the nature of that place wherein he is well disposed. And when Mercury is evil and infortunate, his malice will be according to the nature of that infortune that infortunates him, and according to the nature of that planet wherein he is posited. If he be well dignified, he signifies a good orator, a politic, ingenious person, eloquent, a good disputant, logician or rhetorician, studious of occult sciences, desirous of foreign travel, successful in merchandise. But when ill-placed, he represents a person subject to prattling without sense or reason, a false tale carrier, liar, boaster, busybody, studious and wicked in unlawful arts, given to thievery, pretending or bragging of great knowledge, but having none, unconstant and wavering, all words without judgment. Of the Moon. The Moon is the lowest of all the planets, and is, as Al Bumashar and Al Kabitsius say, a fortune, feminine, nocturnal, and by nature cold and moist, phlegmatic, and is the significator of mothers. She is the swiftest in motion, passing through the zodiac every month, namely in twenty seven days seven hours, four minutes, or thereabout. Her mean motion is thirty degrees, ten minutes, thirty-six seconds. Twenty-four hours, sometimes more, sometimes less, but never exceeding fifteen degrees, two minutes, in twenty-four hours. Her greatest northern latitude is five degrees, seventeen minutes. Her greatest south latitude is five degrees and twelve minutes. The sun and moon are never retrograde, but sometimes more slow in motion than at other times. She ruleth the earthly triplicity by night. The only house of Luna is Cancer by day and night. She is exalted in Taurus, and hath her fall in Scorpio, and her detriment in Capricorn. She governeth the seventh month in conceptions. Her orb is twelve degrees before and after any aspect. Her greatest years, three hundred and twenty. Greater, a hundred and eight. Mean, sixty-six. Least, twenty-five. Her angel is Gabriel. Her day of the week is Monday, whereof she ruleth the first and eighth hours. 
Saturn and Mars are her enemies. The other planets, her friends. When she is joined with Saturn, she stirreth up cold. Aries with Jupiter, serene, clear weather. With Mars, winds and red clouds. With the sun, hot or cold, moist or dry, according to the season and time of the year. With Venus and Mercury, wind and rain. The qualities she naturally signifies are all woven in general, common and vulgar people, travelers, pilgrims, seamen, fishermen, brewers, alewives, drunkards, such women as buy commodities in the streets, as oyster wives and the like, billing gate stuff. She signifies the quality of the mind according to her co-mixture with the other planets. For, if she be joined to a good planet, the quality of the mind of the native signified by her will be good. If she be joined to an evil planet, she operates the contrary. Of infirmities, she signifies the falling sickness, and all species and kinds thereof, as convulsions, apoplexies, palsy, colic, pain in the belly and the left side, infirmities in the stones, bladder, and privities, dropsies, fluxes, gout, sciatica, wounds, king's evil, smallpox, measles, infirmities in the eyes, lips, and tongue, and all diseases proceeding from cold and moist rheumatic causes. Commonly, if well posited and dignified, the moon signifies an ingenious person, a lover of studies and arts, a delighter in curiosities and rarities, but not fixed nor caring to live long in place, often shifting or removing his habitation, of a so tender body, a lover of peace and quietness. But when she is ill-placed, she signifies a drunken, idle sot, a sloven, delighting in a base, beggarly condition, careless and without forecast, but always repining at his present condition, be it good or bad. The corporature usually signified by the moon is a fair stature, a corpulent, phlegmatic body, round face, great big eyes, much hair, but altering the color thereof, inclinable to the nature of the planet she is joined to, usually one eye bigger than the other. Of the Dragon's Head and the Dragon's Tail The dragon's head is naturally a fortune, and by nature masculine, but sometimes by accident an infortune. He is of the nature of Jupiter and Venus, whereof he signifies augmentation and increase of substance, dignity and good fortune. It is the proper nature of the head to increase fortune, but when he is with good planets, he increaseth their fortune, and when joined with ill planets, he augmenteth their malice, and then is an ill fortune accidentally. The tail of the dragon is naturally evil, feminine by nature, but a fortune sometimes by accident, and is composed of the nature of Saturn and Mars. It signifies diminution, dejection, poverty, ill fortune, and decrease of all good, and some philosophers say that the property of the dragon's tail is to diminish, which, if it be with the fortunes, it abates and diminishes their fortune, and if with the infortunes, abates their malice, and thereby is a fortune by accident, from whence it is said that the dragon's head is a fortune with the fortunes, and is evil with the evil, and that the dragon's tail is evil with the good, and good with the evil planets. What plants, stones, minerals, animals, vegetables, each planet governs, 
are omitted here, being particularly intended for another treatise, wherein their nature, and what the planets they are severally under, shall be fully treated of. Of the Aspects, Configurations, Fortitudes, and Abilities of the Planets An aspect is a certain distance of the planets and stars, one from the other in the zodiac, where they either help or hinder, prosper or afflict each other, for by good aspects they assist, in evil, hurt. They are thus called and charactered. Conjunction, sextile, square or quadrant, trine, opposition. The first aspect in the zodiac is sextile, which is of a sixth part of the zodiac, containing two signs, or sixty degrees, and is an aspect of imperfect love. A square aspect compriseth of ninety degrees, or three signs, that is, a fourth part of the zodiac, and is an aspect of imperfect hatred. A trine aspect is when the stars or planets be distant each from the other, a third part of the zodiac, that is, four signs, or one hundred and twenty degrees, and is accounted an aspect of perfect love. Opposition is when stars or planets possess the opposite parts of the zodiac, that is, they be distant six signs, or 180 degrees. This is an aspect of perfect hatred. You are to consider, as we have noted before in the table of aspects of the signs, that aspects are twofold, dexter, right, and sinister, left. The sinister aspects go according to the succession of the signs, and the dexter contrary to the succession of the signs, and observe that a planet in the dexter aspect is of more power than a planet in a sinister. A conjunction cannot properly be termed an aspect, because the planets in conjunction have no distance each from other, but are in one sign and degree of the zodiac, and it is called a partile or true conjunction, when the stars and planets are found placed both in one degree and minute, or when one aspecteth another, and casteth the center of his beams to the degree and minute of the other. Otherwise it is said to be a conjunction platic. For example, the sun in the first degree of Aries, and Saturn in the twelfth degree of the same sign. In this respect, the sun and Saturn are said to be in conjunction platic. The Signification of Aspects Jupiter and Venus are good planets and fortunes. Saturn and Mars are evil planets and infortunes. Sol, Mercury, and Luna are indifferent. A conjunction of good is good, as conjunction of Jupiter and Venus. A conjunction of evil is evil, unless it is to be in a revolution, for then, they say, the conjunction of the evil in respect of the temperament of their qualities is good, as the conjunction of Saturn and Mars. A conjunction of indifferent planets is indifferent, unless of the luminaries, which is always evil. A conjunction of good and evil is evil for the most part, as conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. Nevertheless, this ought to be discerned according to the nature and disposition of the planets surmounting in the figure. A conjunction of good and indifferent is good, as conjunction of Jupiter and Luna. A conjunction of evil with the indifferent is evil, as a conjunction of Saturn and the Moon. Aspects and applications continue while they be within their orbs. End of the opening chapters of Astrological Institutions Being a Perfect Isagogy to the Whole Astral Science by Robert Turner Read by Dan Attrell 
if you would like to read more, please find a link to the whole text in the description box. If you would like to support more work such as this, please visit patreon.com slash themodernhermeticist. And above all, thank you for listening.